Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vibrations and waves. The topic of this video is the speed of a wave, and we want to know what is wave speed and how is it calculated, and what variables affect the speed at which waves move through a medium. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. For any given object, the speed describes how fast or how slow that object is moving. Mathematically, speed is defined as the distance an object travels per time of travel. When you see a mathematical definition like this with the word per in it, per means divided by. So the formula for speed would be speed equal the distance traveled per time of travel. I like to write my formulas in terms of symbols, and the important thing about symbols is that you know what your symbols mean. My symbol I use for, v for speed is the symbol V because speed is like another quantity studied this year, the velocity. And D is for distance and T is for time. For a wave, the speed of a wave is the distance that a wave crest would travel in a given amount of time. It doesn't have to be necessarily the crest of the wave. It could be a trough of the wave or the compression or rarefaction or some recognizable part of the wave. What you would do is look at where the wave is at a given moment in time, say, here, and then sometime later, now where is that wave crest? And if it moves 20 meters in, say, 10 seconds, the speed of such a wave would be the 20 meters divided by the 10 seconds, which comes out to be 2 meters per second. And of course, if the wave was traveling faster, say, 3 meters per second instead of 2 meters per second, it would travel a greater distance of 30 meters in the same amount of time of 10 seconds. When a wave encounters the end of a medium or an obstacle in its path, it often undergoes the behavior of reflection, the bouncing off that obstacle or off the end of the medium and a return to the original position. That's the case here in this animation, which a wave travels from end to end 8 meters, and it takes 16 seconds to travel from the left end to the right end and back. In order to solve for the speed of a wave in a reflection situation, it's important to match the distance to the time. The distance of 8 meters is the one-way distance, and the time of 16 seconds is the two-way distance. So I'm either going to have to half the time or double the distance. I'm going to choose to double the 8 meters, which gives me 16 meters down and back to match the 16 seconds down and back, and when I solve for speed, I get 1 meter per second. When the wave is a sound wave, such as is the situation here, in which Noah stands 170 meters from a steep, steep, steep cliff and yells, hey, and then one second later hears, Hey, we have to again be careful to match the distance to the time. The one second is the time it takes for the wave to hit the cliff and return to Noah uh, down and back time. Noah hears the echo and they have to match that one second to the distance down and back. So I'm going to take the 170 meters and double it to get 340 meters, divide that by one second, and that gives me a speed of 340 meters per second. Let's consider an experiment in which we have a wire that's held at two different tension values or tightnesses and then vibrated at varying frequencies. The wavelength is measured and the speed is calculated and we end up with the data set you see here. Let's ask the question, what does the data tell us particularly about the speed of waves and wires? So I want to call your attention to the last, two col to the last column that's labeled speed and see if you can answer the question, how many speed values do you see? Now some students will answer five and others will answer six speed values, but I want to try to convince you that there's just two speed values. There's the speed of about 16.1 meters per second and the speed of about 25.6 meters per second. There's the speed in the first three rows and there's the speed in the second three rows. And the variations of speed in rows one, two, and three are small and likely attributable to the fact that this is an experiment and we have measure, measurement error. The same thing can be said about the fluctuations in speed in rows 4, 5, and 6. But what is changing the speed values as we go from trial 3 to trial 4? What was changed to cause the dramatic change in speed from 16 to 25.6? It, whatever it was, it wasn't being changed in row 1 and 3, and it wasn't being changed in rows 4 through 6. And if you look in the column labeled tension, you'll find the answer. Because the tension was changed from trial 3 to trial 4, from 2 newtons to 5 newtons, the wire was pulled tighter. 
and the change in the tension is what caused that change in the speed. In fact, looking at rows 1, 2, and 3, the tension was capped at 2 newtons and the speed remained constant around 16-ish meters per second. The same can be said in, row, in trials 4, 5, and 6. The tension was held constant at 5 newtons and the speed was held constant at 25.6-ish meters per second. There's one more thing that the data tells us, and it occurs in columns labeled frequency and wavelength. If you look at trials 1, 2, and 3, you notice that the frequency is increasing. Meanwhile, the wavelength is decreasing, while the speed remains a constant value of about 16.1-ish meters per second. A matter of fact, I notice that in rows 1 and 2, the frequency is doubled, while the wavelength is halved. The same thing occurs in trials 2 and 3, when the frequency is doubled from 8 to 16, but the wavelength is halved from 2 to 1. The overall conclusion from the data is that changes in frequency only affect wavelength but not speed, while a change in tension would affect the speed of the wave. That experiment raises the question of what properties affect the speeds at which waves travel through a medium. We're going to investigate two types of properties, and the first type is the properties of the wave itself. This would include things like the frequency or wavelength of the wave, and even the amplitude of waves. These are all properties that describe the wave. They don't describe the material the wave's traveling through, just the wave itself. And we're going to contrast that type of property with the properties of the medium. Maybe Maybe it's the tension in the wire, or maybe it's the density of the wire, or maybe it's the temperature of air if a wave's traveling through air, or the humidity of air, or the depth of water for a wave traveling through water. These all describe the material the wave's traveling through. It's not sensible to talk about the tension of the wave because tension's not a property of a wave. It's a property of the medium, a wire, the wave's traveling through. The question now arises, which one of these two types of properties affect the speed at which waves travel? And the answer is first that the properties of the wave itself will have no effect upon the speed at which a mechanical wave travels through that medium. Instead, it's the properties of the medium that affect the speeds at which waves travel through the medium. Now let's look at two examples of how the properties of the medium affect the speed of waves. The first example is the speed of sound waves traveling through air. The main variable affecting the speed of sound waves in air is a property of the air itself. It's the temperature of the air. In fact, we find at zero Celsius, the speed of sound waves is 331 meters per second, but for every one degree C above zero Celsius, the speed of sound increases by 0.6 meters per second, leading to the simplified formula for the showing the dependency of wave speed in air upon the temperature of the air. The second example is the speed of waves traveling through a guitar string. It works just the same for a wire or a rope. The idea is that the speed of waves traveling through a string is dependent upon two variables, the tension of the string, how tight it's pulled, and the linear density of the string. By linear density, we mean something different than volumetric density grams per milliliter, we mean the mass per unit length, the kilograms per meter length of that particular string. The formula that expresses the dependency of wave speed in a string upon the tension of the string and the linear density of the string is V equal the square root of the tension in units of newtons divided by the linear density in units of kilograms per meter. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links for each of them in the description section of this video. Any one of these would be good next steps for making the learning stick. The calculator pad problem set is perfect if you wish to practice the V equal D per T equation. The concept builders are excellent for building conceptual understanding, and the tutorial page is perfect if you need to brush up on the topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.